Okay, I'm going to try and do a mechanical analogy of the driven right leg circuit. Um, hopefully this won't confuse you too much. Uh, let's start with looking at the uh, inverting amplifier. So if I draw the electrical diagram, and then I'll draw a mechanical equivalent. So the inverting amplifier was an op-amp, like this, and it was tied down to some ground. Let's call that VG because we'll use that later. Uh, there was a resistor on the input RX and a resistor on the feedback path RF. So RX and RF. This is my V in and this is my V out. The difference between VG and these terminals, these nodes in the circuit. And we showed before that the game was V out over V in is equal to minus RF over RX because it's an inverting amplifier. So this is the electrical, so a lec, the electrical circuit. What's the mechanical equivalent? Well, we have some absolute, this will be the earth almost down here. And then we have some point in space. So this is physically now distance into the air. Uh, we've got some point region along here, uh, a height, and that's at a height of VG meters, let's say. Then what I get is uh, it's a the inverting amp behaves like a like a, a lever around the fulcrum, like a seesaw. So what we end up getting is I'll draw a lever through like that. This might be my this distance here might be my V in. I've just made it negative with respect to VG, and this here might be my this distance might be my my V out which is positive because it's inverting and the length, the, the distance that this lever is, or the, where the fulcrum is placed along the lever is defined by, um, this will be Rx and this will be Rf. So if you're ever looking at an inverting amplifier and trying to figure out what is it doing, it's behaving like this as the input goes up and down, the output goes up and down uh, Oppositely, because um, it's on the other side of this of this fulcrum, um, and the ma the amplification we get is RF over RX. So that's the that's what we call a mechanical model. So mech. All right. So let's now that we've got that idea, let's just move the page down and make some space. So I'll quickly redraw the driven right leg circuit. So we had um, the body. So here's my little guy like this. He's got his legs and arms. And we had the instrumentation amplifier over here. Uh, let's draw it quite big so I can show you what's inside. Remember this there was a, an op amp in here, an op amp in the first stage and uh, that went on to something else. There was a bunch of resistors, one, two, three, four, very messy. And then there was a buffer taking off the middle tap going back out so buffer 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 and then that comes back out and what we put in was the leads so they went in there into this op amp and this lead went into this op amp and they were connected remember to the second resistors it's very messy so go and look at the notes um, and this was let's call this VA and this VB then what we get here is um, the average, well it's an estimate, so we have remember the common mode voltage by definition is VA plus VB all over 2. So what we get out here is an estimate of, of this common mode voltage. I'll write an estimate with a hat like this, so it's, it's approximately the same as the common mode voltage. Um, and we're going to use that for the driven right leg circuit. So let's draw the the virtual ground, the floating ground, which would be V G uh, Z V G and the amplifier is referenced to that, so that would be my, my V out there. And uh, then this what we have here is an invert that the driven right leg circuit is just an inverting amplifier. So we have our op amp like this, minus plus, um, tie that down to ground, and then we have the RX on the input, RX. We have RF on the feedback path, and then that goes off to the, to the body. I'll connect that now in a second. Uh, let's give this call this VP here, 
and let's call this guy so it's going to connect to this in there and then there's also a parasitic leg it could be an impedance but I'll just draw it as a resistance RL and then somewhere down here is the earth as well and there's a parasitic capacitance that we're not really going to worry about too much with this mechanical analogy that's coming up but it will be there anyway so that's uh, what I called ZG okay so let's draw a mechanical analogy of what's happening here somewhere on this body as well by the way is this VCM so that would be connected to a Thevenin circuit um, and we'll assume that that's pretty much out, outside our control we can't change VCM all that much it's caused by the, by the 240 uh, 50 Hz power supply so we can't do very much about it and let's draw a mechanical analogy of this so what it's actually going to look like is um, let's scroll down a bit more the common mode voltage you can imagine it's a it's a we're going to replace voltage with height so we're going to have a pulley system like this let's see if I can draw this we'll have a pulley so here's a rope going around the wheels of the pulley and then this is my ground level my earth level down here and then the body is going to be at some point at some height VCM so VCM is the height up as far as there and this is free to move up or down as I move the pulley around so this is all decided by the two, 240 volts supply and the two capacitances par, uh, the parasitic capacitances so have a look at the notes about that it's having an equivalent for that then this is the VCM level so let's just draw a little line across here because of the buffer above there's a buffer here so we have an estimate of VCM the buffer sort of gives us uh, it's almost like we're observing what's happening on that pulley and then reproducing it on our own pulley over here so we have another pulley over here like this uh, very badly drawn okay and what we're getting is this is our VCM hat, our estimate, and this is a buffer. And what it means is that we're not loading the circuit at all, so we're, we're not changing the VCM, we're just observing it and reproducing it over here. And in the circuit you'll see, let's move up a little bit, you'll see that VCM is connected into this uh, inverting amplifier. So remember, the inverting amplifier can be considered to be a lever, so let's draw uh, if I label this point um, the oh sorry that's VCM hat so this is VCM hat um, it's a lever so this is a straight line like this and VG will be here whatever this height is that's VG so that's the distance from ground remember we're working in a mechanical analogy so this is all distance um, that's VG this is going to be VP and the resistance RL, resistor in a mechanical analogy is a dampener, so we'll actually have like a piston with fluid in it, so it's, it's, it'll move but it's reluctant to move, so we've got this piston, a damper, like that, so we've got some fluid in there or whatever, and this is our RL, and remember the way this um, amplifier works this inverting amplifier, the lever lens will be Rx is to Rf, like that. So we get this amplification effect. And now consider what will happen. Over here, as VCM moves up and down, our estimate from the buffer pretty much follows it up and down as well. And that pulls this VCM voltage up and down in the same way. What we would have done before is we would have connected, our, this would have been our VG before, we would have just connected the um, the ground of the amplifier straight to th the right leg through this dampener and we will see that as VCM moves up and down VG will kind of follow it pulled along by the damper but it will it will have trouble following it but when we use the amplifier the output of the amplifier which is this point here VP that will follow it uh, will follow this point and VG which is forced by the amplifier to be at this point in the fulcrum will actually be much closer to VCM so the observed what we have now is this is the observed common mode observed common mode with the driven right leg so with uh, 
a DRL, driven right leg. But what we would have had before is this would have been the old, if we had it just connected the ground of the amplifier straight to the leg, this would have been the observed. So this was the observed um, common mode before, so with no DRL. So what we see is we've reduced, using this amplifier, we've reduced the DRL, the, the um, common mode seen when we use the DRL. And the reason is due to this fulcrum uh, amplifying effect of the inverting amplifier. Um, I hope that helps. I don't know if it does. So um, if you've got any questions, come and talk to me.